Welcome to the Pulmonine video in service. Today, members of our team will walk you through the O2 Max. We thank you for choosing the O2 Max as your product of choice. Enjoy. The O2 Max with Nebulizer comes in a small pack with a label that clearly illustrates the contents and size. Within the bag, you will see the following items. A directions for use. One Bitrack ED mask in a Ziploc bag. A nebulizer, which is sealed in its own bag to use at a later time if you're not going to use it with your patient. And the O2 Max generator itself, vent tubing and elbow. This is part of the system. It comes pre-connected to enable quick and easy CPAP application. Now let's work our way through the system in a logical way from how the oxygen flows through the system from your O2 supply to the patient. At the distal end, you will either see a green screw denoting oxygen connection that is to be screwed to the high pressure port, also known as a DIS or PTO. Or you may see a quick connect when combined with a quick connect pigtail on your cylinder, it makes for a seamless transition from bedside to ambulance and to the hospital wall. Minimizing flow disruption in CPAP is vital to optimizing patient outcomes. To understand why the O2 Max utilizes a high pressure port, we need to look at the two outlets we often deal with on an EMS regulator and wall outlet. The wall outlet and high pressure port on a regulator are all unrestricted flow. When we use unrestricted flow, we get a constant pressure that is not dependent on the tank contents. If we use a flow meter, this is restricted flow. As the cylinder contents get low, the flow drops. As a pre-hospital provider, this means you have to constantly monitor the CPAP device to ensure your patient is receiving therapeutic CPAP. With the O2 Max, you can plug in the device and have instant CPAP that doesn't require constant attention, which means you can spend more time monitoring and treating your patient. From the connection, we have a clear tube that leads to the O2 Max generator. This tube is feeding 15 liters per minute of flow from the oxygen source at 50 PSI from the high pressure port into the generator. The generator then entrains or pulls in further 125 liters per minute of ambient air to give us 140 liters per minute of flow. More importantly, that air is being entrained, it's also being filtered by a bacterial and viral filter that is also catching potential allergens. This is important as most of the patients we are treating with CPAP already have compromised lung damage, so adding contaminants is not ideal. The O2 Max is a closed system and provides clean, filtered CPAP pressures. This is also a good time to highlight the fact that the O2 Max is made in America. Because the O2 Max is made in America, we are subject to FDA quality regulations. That means that each O2 Max is tested here. This is also a great reason why we do not need a manometer to support our product. Each unit is tested and delivers the PEEP, flow, and FiO2 that is documented in our directions for use. Moving on from the generator, we come to our expandable hose. It can be extended to 72 inches or 6 feet as well as being recompressed should you need to. I recommend that you extend from the generator side and keep a hands width compressed. This will help with reducing any potential noise due to the high flow the O2 Max delivers. Pulmodyne uses expandable vent tubing on the O2 Max as it provides a more subtle and distributive flow to the patient's face which leads to increased patient comfort and compliance. From the hose, we come to the elbow of the O2 Max. Depending on what product you purchase, it may look different. For this video, we will look at the most common system used worldwide and that is the 3-set PEEP. Your system or hospital may use a fixed setting of PEEP and if you have questions about this, please contact your local representative. From the hose, we come to the anti-asphyxia valve. It's colored orange so it's easy to see. Right now there's no flow, so essentially it's in its anti-asphyxia mode. If the patient was wearing the mask, the patient would be able to breathe through these two openings here. Once the flow starts, the flap will lift and occlude the two holes. The valve is now in CPAP mode. The key to this anti-asphyxia valve is the distance to the patient's mouth. It's very close, so it minimizes dead space should your oxygen supply fail. Moving on, we come to the PEEP valve. As you can see, this is a three-set PEEP with settings of 5, 7.5, and 10. The valve comes out of the factory set at 5. That means once you connect the O2 Max to an oxygen source and turn the cylinder on, you have instant effective CPAP at 5 of PEEP. It doesn't get any simpler than that. 
One of the distinct advantages of the O2 Max is that our PEEP is totally independent of the flow. That means when you increase the PEEP, the flow, FiO2, and cylinder run times are not affected. This is important in your sick patients that require high PEEP. In other systems, high PEEP requires an increase in leader flow, which in turn reduces cylinder run time. This is counterproductive in patients that need longer pressure times. Remember, in CPAP, time under pressure is key to better outcomes. To increase the PEEP from 5 to 7.5, you make one full turn. As well as a visual reading, you will hear a click and feel a click. Three ways to make sure you're dialed in. If you don't make the full turn and your valve is slightly off, the PEEP will only be about 0.5 PEEP off, so you're still within therapeutic range. On the sides are the exhalation ports where the patient exhales from. It's good practice to have the PEEP valve numbers facing forward so the exhalation ports are running left and right of the patient's face. So this is a comfort and compliance issue for the patient so they are not breathing into their own face. You will notice that when the patient exhales, the disc goes up. When the patient inhales, the disc goes down. When you see the disc go up and down, you have a seal on your mask and effective CPAP. From the PEEP valve, we move down to the integrated nebulizer port. This was developed for the O2 Max after we received user feedback. As we discussed earlier, the O2 Max is connected to the high pressure port. This now frees up the low pressure port so we can nebulize and run CPAP off a single cylinder. With the integrated neb port, you no longer need to buy a T adapter when you also consider that we are including a nebulizer. Adopting the O2 Max will result in low cost savings. Back to the nebulizer port. We provide a small cap to protect the check valve. However, this is a closed circuit and will work covered or uncovered. You will notice that when I push the check valve up, it opens the circuit and any nebulized medication will now be administered to the patient. Notice how instantaneous this is. You add nebulized medication instantly without any disruption in CPAP therapy. We include the continuous care nebulizer with a scored needleless entry port to add medication without having to interrupt your CPAP therapy. As I stated, the elbow, hose, and generator are all pre-connected. When you want to start CPAP, you will need to attach the BITRAC ED mask. Our BITRAC full face ED mask, made in the USA, offers several advantages over the competition. First, everything is made of silicone, including the forehead piece. The competition's masks are at times made of foam, which can cause skin breakdown on the forehead. Ours is easy to wipe clean and adjust due to our unique Omni clip. It adjusts both up, down, and in and out. Our Bitrack Full Face ED mask also offers a floating dual lip style cushion, which allows the mask to float on the patient's face. Because the mask floats on the patient's face, it gives you many advantages over the competition. First being it helps prevent pressure ulcers from forming on the bridge of the nose, and it also prevents unwind leak from happening. When you take the mask out of the package, the top two straps are pre-attached to the mask. The bottom two are detached from the mask. So the idea is attach the bottom two clips to the mask, size it properly with the Velcro, and remember there's two sets of Velcro. You can also undo the bottom two clips, lift it up 90 degrees, and give the patient medication. And now, a complete product demonstration on the O2 Max. First, open the bag and grab the generator from inside. Place the elbow of the circuit onto the mask. Take your generator and connect via the green disc fitting or quick connect to your oxygen source. Allow your patient to take the mask and hold it up to his or her face and this will allow them to feel the oxygen flowing out and will reduce anxiety and increase compliance. Place the strap over their head and connect the bottom two clips. Pull on the Velcro either side to get a good, loose fit. You do not want to pull the mask too tightly or leaks will occur. This mask should float on the patient's face. Adjust the Omniclip in and out, up and down for an optimal fit. To conclude our in-servicing, let's go over some of the accessories in this line. The O2 Max Trio is the first accessory. 
As we stated previously, the O2 Max has a fixed configuration that generates approximately 30% FiO2. Dr. Bledsoe stated in his clinical paper on FiO2 in the pre-hospital EMS market that 30% should be adequate. However, there are patients that will need an increase in FiO2. For this, we have the TRIO. The TRIO is sold separately or pre-connected as part of the system that will allow you to dial up the FiO2 from approximately 30 to 60 to 90% FiO2. It is easy to attach by grabbing the white top of the O2 Max generator, twisting the bayonet lock open, and replacing the fixed top with the TRIO top. Be mindful that the TRIO at 60 and 90 FiO2 will dramatically shorten the runtime of the diesel. The last accessory is the O2 Rescue Filter. For the patients that have a communicable respiratory condition, you can attach the filter at the elbow of the BiTrack ED mask interface and filter any exhaled contaminants. Keep in mind this means you cannot nebulize the patient when the filter is attached. This concludes your video in service. We thank you for taking the time to walk through our product with us. If you have any further questions, you can contact your clinical rep, your distributor, or head to our website at pulmonine.com.